Hey everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful week and a beautiful holiday season. But if you're not, please know that you are loved. And with that, for this week, I'm going to do a little rewind, not because I'm too lazy to record an episode because I have plenty recorded, but I just kind of wanted a nice little reminder on how to help navigate grief during the holiday season, which I know as this airs, we're just a few days away from Christmas, but it doesn't matter. Holidays happen throughout the year, and this type of year can be a little difficult and a little sad, especially once the holidays are over and things are dark and cold, as for those of us up in the Northern Hemisphere. So I just wanted a nice little reminder for everybody that it's okay to be grieving during the holidays and how to help navigate that process. So here is an episode from the end of 2022 on grief and the holidays. Before I flip it over to that, real quick reminder to please check me out on Patreon, patreon.com slash Nikki the Death Doula. You get access to the podcast a week early, grief affirmations twice a week, and other special events and check-ins. So come check that out at patreon.com slash Nikki the Death Doula. You can try it out for free for seven days. All right. Thank you so much. And without further ado, here's grief and the holidays. And welcome to Good Grief, the podcast dedicated to demystifying and destigmatizing grief with compassion and humor. I'm Nikki. I'm an end of life doula and a grief coach in Columbus, Ohio. And today we are going to be talking about grief and the holidays. As this is airing, Thanksgiving is nigh. I believe it will be Thanksgiving Eve when this goes up. So, yeah, Christmas is just around the corner as well as Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and New Year and all the beautiful holidays therein at the end of the year. Oh, and solstice. Let's not forget the winter solstice. Beautiful day because the days start getting longer after that. And for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere, that's a good thing. So the holidays tend to be known as a magical time of year, a beautiful time of year. It's the most wonderful time of year. It's exciting and solemn and beautiful and twinkly and so much fun, right? Yeah, not for all of us. <laughs> not if you've suffered a significant loss recently in your life. And those times, the holidays are just that much harder because let's face it, the holidays tend to be, and I'm going to continue to say the holidays, and I'm trying to encompass any holidays that may be occurring the next few months, any significant holiday to you. The holidays, specifically at the end of the year, tend to be incredibly stressful times. They can be a heck of a lot of fun. There's a lot of cool stuff going on. Things are pretty and there's twinkly lights and maybe gifts and great feasts and times with your family and friends, but there's so much expectation involved with that, isn't there? It's, I know my mom gets stressed out every year and I can't stand why I keep telling her, mom, it's fine. We don't need all the, all the bells and whistles. Calm down a bit. It's okay, but eh. So the holidays are already a very stressful time of year. And when you stick grief on top of that, it can make it so much, so much more difficult, so much harder, and it can be completely unbearable for some people. The holiday time also tends to bring up old griefs and those that we've lost, especially close people in our lives. It's similar to birthdays, anniversaries, you know, other big special events. They might, you know, really dredge up an old loss or a grief or hurt, and it can really make things feel so much more intense. So let's talk a little bit about that and what we can do to kind of take the edge off (laughs) during the holidays. So first of all, as I said, it can be, it might be considered the most wonderful time of year, but it can also be the most stressful time of year for so many people. And again, putting grief on top of that is just going to make it so much harder. And especially this time of year with frequent gatherings and and meals and parties, it can really trigger a lot of memories, have a lot of painful reminders too. So let's, let's dive in a little deeper into the details of the holidays and what might hurt the worst and what we can do to combat that. So let's talk about traditions a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to go anything, go into anything specific, obviously, but I feel like a lot of these holidays tend to hold a lot of traditions and a lot of very meaningful traditions for families, whether it's a party, a specific meal, a gathering, a church service. There's 
all sorts of big traditions that come along. Maybe you make this, I know in my family, we make the same dinner. We've been having the same dinner for Christmas Eve my entire life. So probably before that, but especially Thanksgiving, there's a lot of traditions surrounding the meal you're going to have and who's coming and what you're going to do that day and how the day's going to go. Well, if you're suffering a very recent and traumatic loss, these traditions can be hard. Not only are they triggering for you and can dredge up a lot of hurt and pain, but it can just be mentally exhausting. I mean, some of these things are mentally exhausting in and of themselves and physically. Watching, you know, my family over the years preparing Thanksgiving meals, it's like I get tired just, you know, peeling potatoes and they're doing everything starting at like, you know, six in the morning. <laughs> And, you know, not to discount all the prep work done weeks ahead of time to lead up to Thanksgiving dinners. So step back and think about everything you typically do for whatever holiday is upcoming and just reevaluate all of them. Do you really need to have Thanksgiving dinner at your house this year? Maybe talk to one of your family members or relatives and say, look, I just don't think I can handle it this year. Do you mind hosting? Or I'm just not going to be able to host this year. Someone else will have to pick up the ball on that. And that can be hard. I get that. You know, I, I can imagine saying you, you've done this for, you know, 50 years and all of a sudden you, you just can't do it. And that's hard to all of a sudden be that person. It's like, I can't, I can't host this anymore. But that's just it. This doesn't mean you're never going to host Thanksgiving or Christmas again. It just means maybe this year you're not. Maybe this year we're going to order pizza and watch TV <laughs> in our pajamas. There's nothing wrong with it. I keep telling my mom, let's do that one year. I'm I'm aces with that. <laughs> but, you know, and I won't get on my soapbox. I, tr I get on my soapbox every episode. I know that. But I won't get on my soapbox about consumerism, I promise. But gift buying. Gift buying tends to get out of hand this time of year. And maybe you're that person that buys gifts for everybody. And this year, going out to the stores is just way too triggering, way too draining, and you can't do it. So you know what? Get some gift cards online. Or don't get anything. If somebody is going to kick you out of their life because you didn't buy them a Christmas present this year or a Hanukkah gift, okay, that's on them, not you, <laughs> you know? But just sit back and think, maybe I'm not going to bake four dozen cookies this year for all my coworkers, the mailman, all my neighbors, and all my friends and family. Maybe I'm not going to bake any cookies this year and not send Christmas cards. That's okay. Maybe you're not going to have a tree this year if you're doing Christmas. Maybe... You don't want to have that big family meal. So don't. It's okay. Again, it doesn't mean it's permanent. It doesn't mean you'll never get to do it again. It just means you're not going to do it this year. Or maybe you won't ever do it again. That's okay too. If you're just sick and tired of hosting Thanksgiving or whatever gathering meal, then don't do it anymore. Good Lord. Another thing is maybe try talking to your friends and family ahead of time. I'm sure, especially if it was a significant loss and they were all aware of it, they're going to understand. If you tell them, look, I don't think I'm going to be myself this year. I don't think I can do X, Y, Z, and I kind of just want to be left alone. Get that out ahead of time. Let them know so, so that they can support you and be there for you and see what you might need help with and let them offer to take over whatever it is you feel you have to do. If you really do feel like you're okay to host a big gathering or, or, you know, big four dozen, four dozen isn't a lot, I guess. I don't know. Bake 20 dozen cookies for everybody. Ask for help. Talk to one of your family members and say, look, I really want to get this done this year because it, it would make me feel better to make these cookies for everybody. Can you please come help me? Could you, if I give you a list in my credit card, could you go to the grocery store for me? Because I don't really want to leave the house right now. Ask for help. I say that on every episode about, about any type of grief. It's totally okay to ask for help. Never feel bad about it. And if you have a long list of things and you don't want to give up on everything that year, prioritize a little, all right? So this meal has to happen, right? This meal is going to happen, but I guess I'm, I'm not going to go out and get a tree this year, or I'm not going to go out and buy gifts this year, but I will do this meal. That is important to me, and that's what I'm going to do. Great. Most of all, try to let go of those expectations. I know it might feel like everybody's counting on you to be the host for this year, or everybody's counting on you to buy all the gifts, everybody's counting on you to make all the cookies, everybody's counting on you to plan the party. Even if they expect you to, and they, you feel like that's an expectation, it it's not. You know, like I said, talk to people ahead of time, say, look, I'm not hosting the party this year, guys. I don't have it in me. 
it's too hard, I'm hurting too much. You don't even have to say that. You don't have to make any excuses. You don't owe that to anybody. Especially if it's been a significant loss in your life, they're going to understand and they're going to know. Just flat up, guys, I'm not hosting the party this year, okay? If somebody else wants to take that on, that'd be amazing. Thanks. And again, just remember, any change you make this year, it's not permanent. It doesn't mean you can't come back and do it again next year. You know, give yourself some grace. So with that, let's talk about what you can do outside of, you know, holiday traditions and canceling the Christmas party, which we'll get back to that in a second. But don't forget to take time for you and self-care, you know, if you need a whole week off or whatever, you just want to bury your head and avoid the holidays altogether, do it. If that's what you need to do, do it. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. Like, the, you know, you're eating, drinking water. <laughs> and this coming from me is going to sound real weird. Try to avoid alcohol, you know? I'm not saying you have to go dry, but uh, if you want to have a glass of wine with dinner, that's fine. But, we, you know, alcohol is a depressant, and it can tend to amplify your emotions a lot. So if you're already in a really bad spot, drinking to excess is not going to help things. It's just going to make it worse. So, you know, let's, let's ease up on the booze. Do as I say, not as I do. Anyway, so I'm going to go back to parties real quick and big gatherings. If you have suffered a rather significant loss, you might have a lot of people in your life that are going to do the whole, I just, I, we need to get you out of the house and let's, let's get you not thinking about it and distract you for, let's have some fun for one night. And you may just have like, a ton of invitations to parties and oh my god it's overwhelming again like i said before don't be afraid to say no to some of them but if you do decide to go to a gathering of some type or a party just some things to keep in mind be prepared to be a little uncomfortable okay you might walk in and feel like everybody's staring at you because oh there she is oh she lost her husband this year oh this must be really hard for her you might kind of be the elephant in the room and it might feel awkward. It might not. I don't know. But just be prepared for that. You know, it's just have that in the back of your brain. You know, if it's a, a loss that everybody knows about, people are going to know what's there and they're going to be, you know, looking to you. And you might get a lot of, are you okay? Are you handling things? And I know, like, for me, that gets, it can get overwhelming. It can get old real quick. <laughs> so just be prepared to know that's coming. If you have accepted an invitation to a party and you decide you're going to go and you wake up that day and you're like, nope, and you want to nope out of that, nope out of it. It's, it's fine. If you have to cancel same day, assess how you're feeling that day. Don't, don't push yourself too hard. If you're not going to make it, don't make it. It's fine. Just assess how you're feeling that day, okay? Maybe if you are able take somebody with you that can be your safe person. Uh, my husband can read me like a book. He can look at my face and know that I'm done and I'm ready to leave <laughs> and we'll leave. Maybe have that person you can count on to help you get out if you're really done and you're just not feeling it. Or that can talk to the host, say, we got to go. I'm so sorry. Thank you so much for having us. Or even just somebody that can come over and hold your hand to let you know you're okay and to ground you, bring you back to the moment. And we can talk about grounding in a second too, but don't be afraid to have an exit strategy. You know, if you're at a really big party at somebody else's house, park a couple blocks away. Don't risk getting yourself blocked in by four other cars and then awkwardly have to go around them while you're crying and upset and maybe having a panic attack to find out who owns all these cars. I got to move so you can get out. And oh my God, maybe you have to walk a couple extra blocks just to make sure you can get out quickly if you need to. And again, this is another point where alcohol, maybe try to avoid that because if you do need to make a quick escape and you got to drive home, don't be driving if you've been drinking, okay? Please don't do that. So yeah, let me go back to grounding real quick. I'm going to give you a couple techniques I've learned over the years for grounding. And it's just one of those things when things are getting a little overwhelming and you're all everything in your head is swirling around and you're edging on panic or freaking out a little bit. Uh, deep breathing, obviously, but take a deep breath and... If you can get to a quiet place or someplace where you can be alone, look around the room, name five things you can see, name five colors you that are around you, name five states, just find some things to name out loud to bring you back into the present moment. It's better to find things that are around you. Think of three things you can smell, four things you can hear, anything maybe you can taste, 
you know, things like that. Just, just use your senses to bring yourself back into the moment. Uh, as far as breathing goes, my favorite breathing technique when I'm uh, trying to stave off a panic attack is square breathing, which is where you inhale for a four count, hold it for a four count, exhale for a four count, hold it for a four count, and repeat. So it's breathe in, hold, breathe out, hold, breathe in, hold for four counts each. So there's some nice little grounding techniques to kind of help take the edge off if you were in a bad situation and starting to have a panic attack. But overall, give yourself some grace. Be kind to yourself. You may have just suffered a big loss and you're feeling a lot of things and things are a little crazy right now, you know? That's okay. Like I'm always saying, whatever you're feeling is valid. Give yourself some grace and let yourself just feel them, okay? So let's say instead of avoiding everything, not necessarily avoiding, but let's say you want to really embrace remembering somebody you've lost with the holidays. Awesome. Maybe find a new tradition you can start. Maybe they had a favorite meal, something they love to eat more than anything in the world, and you start having that every year for Thanksgiving or whatever other holiday. Awesome. Do that. Uh, I know a lot of people like to do the, uh, it's a I don't know if it's a tradition, but where you set an extra place at the table and maybe put their picture there, or you don't have to put their picture, but you just have a place set with the place setting and the silverware and the cups and everything for the person that you've lost. So they're kind of with you in spirit. That's not my favorite. I personally don't like that. It feels a little too maudlin to me, but a lot of people really like to do that. And I, I can definitely see the beauty in that. Maybe have a candle lighting ceremony or some type of ceremony, or even just light a candle at home. If you want and have like a little prayer or read, read a poem they enjoyed or a poem that makes you think of that person, consider donating to a charity that meant something to them or have a toast at dinner to, to Joe Schmo, who we lost this year. He's a beautiful soul and love this holiday above all others. You know, here's to you, Joe Schmo. <laughs> or if you want to do like a memorial or if you want to make like some type type of uh, legacy project or memorial project, this is something I learned in training as a doula, and <laughs> nobody ever wants to do these. And this is something I really want to do with somebody. It's like my wheelhouse because I'm a creative, artistic person. But think of a project everybody can work on together. Maybe you all make a silly movie, or put together a legacy box where you all write letters and cards and add photos, and put them in a nice decorative box for that person. Or you make a scrapbook all together that you can copy and give out to people as gifts that year. The sky's the limit with legacy projects. If you're ever curious about making one and you want some tips, hit me up. I got it. This is like my wheelhouse. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's really all I had. And I mean, end all be all, do what's best for you. You know, if you need to take some time off, take some time off. Don't push yourself. It's okay to say no, right? Cut yourself a little bit of slack. If you want to sit in your jammies and watch Hallmark movies all day, call me. I'll come over because I love Hallmark movies at Christmas. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm ridiculous. They're terrible. I love them. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, so that's all I have for this week. Uh, so now, without further ado, it's time for the death deck. Woo! Okay. <laughs> all right. So I got the death deck right here, and I'm going to shuffle them up. Woo. Oh, I always end this deck is huge. I always end up dropping a couple. All right, I'll pull one at random from the middle. Urgh. Oh, don't drop them. Okay. Ooh, okay. I like this one. It's multiple choice. I think writing my own obituary is A, helpful. Nobody knows me like I do. B, conceited. Let my loved ones decide what to say. Or C, morbid. Why would I do that? Ah. Uh, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, kind of on the fence with that one. I, I f see a lot of value in writing your own because having worked with family members who've just lost somebody, sometimes it's, oh, it's really hard to think of what the heck to say, you know, especially after you've just had a, a significant loss. You might, it, it might feel rushed and you might feel like you're forgetting something. I feel like having something written out ahead of time isn't the worst idea. It takes a little bit of pressure off your family. But I don't know. I also feel like that might be something my family would want to do. You know, that might be something they feel that would make them feel better to to write something out. So I don't know. I guess if it were me, maybe I'll just write one. And, you know, you can change it as the years go by. 
write one and say, hey, I wrote this. If you don't feel like writing one, here it is. If you do, throw this out. I don't care. I, I don't I guess that's my thoughts. I don't know. I'd be curious what you have to say. So, you know, reach out to me. I'm uh, Nikki the Death Doula on Instagram and I'm at NikkiTheDeathDoula.com. Reach out to me there. I'd love to hear from you. I like to hear from my listeners. And as always, don't forget to check me out on Patreon too. Patreon.com slash Nikki the Death Doula. As always, all any money I make for my Patreon will go to a fund so that I can provide pro bono work to people who cannot afford my services. All right, guys, that's it. Please have a lovely, lovely week, and I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving to those of you who celebrate. If you don't, I hope you have a good Thursday <laughs> or good whatever day this is that you're listening to this. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, your grief is yours. Your feelings are valid. Grief doesn't always have to suck. Good Grief was brought to you by me. You can find me online at NikkiTheDeathDoula.com. Today's episode was produced by me. Research and scripts written by me. Your host is me. Editing and sound design also me. Music is not me. Music is Cheery Monday by Kevin McLeod. Licensed information can be found at filmmusic.io backslash standard hyphen license. Special thank you to my best friend and husband for constantly reassuring me that I don't suck. <laughs>